Okay, uh, we're, we're all here today to learn what Cowboy Dave, Cowboy David, has, is bringing. He's been uh, treating horses for 30 years <laughs> using all of these different techniques that he's learned um, and having great success with horses with principally the uh, equitonic, uh, the versions of the equitonic over the years. And he has a variety of other techniques that he's going to be showing us today. And um, it's just so remarkable that he's had such success with treating the whole horse and not just symptoms in the horse. So, so this is a big key of what uh, Cowboy David brings to us today. And it, 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 while we're doing this, I'd like you to think about how it affects people as well. Because we tend to think my elbow hurts or my knee hurts and not look at the whole body. So from yesterday to today, um, we treated this horse yesterday, right? No, no, okay, the horse we treated yesterday changed in the 45 minutes he treated the horse we could see it become a horse a healthy looking horse from a tight horse and i just imagine what can happen with people as well so cowboy dave is going to be showing us uh his technique and i'm going to be mostly moving the camera around to get close-ups of point locations in this first round and then later in later rounds we'll be asking him questions while he's treating the different courses yeah i only use the rest on myself this when is i go a to real bed. important point for uh, shoulders and sore limbs i can uh do, do this thank point. you thank you thank you and then when I go back to start on the back end, I can look forward and I can see your shoulder muscles relax. Mm -hmm. She's feeling it. Her lower lip's starting to hurt. Mm -hmm. Her ear, she's just listening up a storm here. Like I said, she mm -hmm. loves it. Now that we've done as much body good. work as we have, she's yeah. really well, responsive it makes this to a, it. This a lot easier. Okay, next spot. Oh, yeah. oh this is GB8. And it is... Center to the back, caudal to the last rib. Which means, me. here's the last rib right here. It's right there. It's very expensive. And uh, release muscle spasm, <laughs> contractions, tremors, and convulsions. Uh, this works, uh, in, this is an important point for horses that are tying up. But this treatment will stop that. This point treatment, and I've got it down to where it takes maybe a half hour. Okay. And, uh, I'll have copies of this. Okay. You'll, I'll make sure you get one. Okay. And, uh, it's real easy and it works. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Real good. You know, I have, Allie, you're going to be sound for real instead of sort of. Yeah. Well, you've got most of it done. <laughs> you've got most of it done. Do you do both sides? Stupid. Do you do both sides of the horse? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, next spot. Okay, this is the bow way. This is in the. Uh, depression right here uh, and that's the master point for the rear end um, let's stay here any lameness or paralysis paralysis of the hindquarters arthritis at, of the hip joint also aids in heat stroke overexertion and colic but this is one of the points that that relieve that hopkins stifle syndrome that i was talking about earlier and that's right in the middle? Yes, okay. there's that lumbo, lumbar sacral space where here's the lumbar vertebrae mm -hmm. and you get back here and it's just a little dip. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Can't see it very well on her, but right. other horses have it. <laughs> and right in the middle, moves back and forth depending on what lick she's on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, next one. Okay, this is uh, gallbladder 27, I believe. This is uh, Dr. Marvin Kane's hot point. He's the veterinarian who really got me started. He's mentioned in my veterinary acupuncture book. He's uh, considered the father of 
acupuncture here in this country. Okay. Went to China and studied, and I was lucky enough to follow him around for a few years back in the early 2000s in Kentucky, and he he was an incredible person. He uh, so good at acupuncture, so good. But they, uh, the veterinary acupuncture book that all the veterinarians used to study to be acupuncturists, uh, refer to him as the father of acupuncture mm -hmm. in hmm. the U.S. And this is his point that free, uh, when you palpate and they're really hot right here. She used to be. Yeah. She she would, yeah, like she would kick you. Yeah. She was bad. That's <laughs> right. Ready for cycle. the next one? Okay, this is liver. Or no, uh, spleen 13. And it's right here in the middle of Here's the tube coxae. Here's the top of it. Here's the bottom of it. And it's right here, just in front of that hair swirl. But there are four spots the ballet, uh, this top of this, just inside the tube coxae here, which is the call letter 27. Then the spleen 13 right here, and then it's stomach 30 right below this uh, the bottom of the tubercoxy. Yeah, I do two things, Lindsay. This acupoint mm -hmm. work, and then uh, which is tra traditional Chinese medicine, and then I uh, hit the stress points uh, that are there's about 40 on all over the horse, and mm -hmm. whatever discipline dictates what stress points are going to be hot. Yeah. And uh, she's an x-ray source, so this, this spot right here where the, it's a Okay, next point. Gluteus minor, I believe. I, and I brought the uh, massage with her hands, but I'll, okay. that's, I'll put the uh, fly sheet on her and put this in that velcro okay. thing and leave it on her. Okay. okay. And we're schooling dressage now, so all those glute muscles and yeah 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 she, she well, feels it <laughs> uh they, you know a horse when it's doing anything is using every muscle yeah and when there's something not freed up it slows everything else down yeah hmm. yeah we have to alternate days so that she doesn't get too sore mm -hmm. do something else and then do mm -hmm. dressage and then do something else and... <clears throat> You could almost see her coming out of the stall the next day going, oh, my butt yeah, hurts. Like, <laughs> I did legs today. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Upper bodies tomorrow. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, next point. Okay, this is um, stomach 36. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And it's... Uh, Tibia, tibial and fibular pain, stifle <laughs> pain, gastrointestinal disorders, fever, mm. anorexia, and lethargy. But it's uh, in this spot right here. And really? the good thing about the these machines that the acupoint is a really tiny spot, but it, you've got a two inch circle. Yeah. So it, it, you, you, gotta, you gotta be on. working at it to miss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Called bladder 34 is what it is, and it's uh, weak and pain in the hind, weakness and pain in the hind limb and lumbar spine, pain in the stifle and gastrointestinal upset, and tendonitis. She's never actually kicked, but there's always a first time. <laughs> She's already relaxed. Okay, next one. And it's bladder 40 right here. It's, it's, that's the alarm point for the hawk when they're sore right here. That's uh, when you need to do this treatment. And uh, Those three or four? Yeah, yeah, there's four points. The center one and then three on each hip. Yeah. Um, and, it, and that pain goes away and doesn't, doesn't come back. You've managed to get those tendons relaxed just by having the machine focused on her. Yeah. But uh, you'll be able to feel this treatment the next time you get on her. Cool. 
Yeah, this is the last spot on this side. Ari, and then I'll okay. go to the front and work my way back. Nice. Where did she raise? All over the country. Um, the owner finally caught up with her on the East Coast and uh, brought her out to California where she did six months of a retirement, or not a retirement, a rehab facility where she was in pasture. And then she moved a little south of here um, where she lived in a setup like this, stall with a run, and uh, her owner took her on walks and hand grazed and a teenager hacked her. Um, no pressure, no mental, emotional pressure. Next slide. And she did really well with that. And then she moved here and lost her marbles. <laughs> she would drag me halfway across the arena, bucking and screaming and freaking out. And yeah, it was fun. She's been a wonderful, wonderful project. I am just insanely pleased with how much better she is. Oh, She's almost imagine. not scared of cows anymore. Almost. <laughs> this is her dream. Yeah, yeah. It's so, taught me a lot. So just lots of fears in her? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of fear. Mm -hmm. um, and no trust. Mm. Didn't trust anybody. Pain-induced. Oh, f from the, the hard... They, uh, the horses at the racetrack get trained mm -hmm. by obsessive-compulsive people. Oh, and they're obsessive-compulsive horses. I mean, she has, she has a tick where she bobs her head. And she gets it going so hard, her back leg goes too. And I kid you not, she would do it the entire time she was awake. And the more upset she was, the faster her head would go. I'm amazed she hasn't ripped every muscle in her back doing it. Did you just change? No. Ready to switch. Okay. Um, yeah, and like I said, when she came off the trailer from the racetrack, yeah, they drugged the heck out of them. They get uppers, they get downers, oh, they get anti-bleeders, oh. they get anti-inflammatories. Her coat was totally dull. Mm. She was super skinny, no muscles. She just looked rotten. You, you wouldn't recognize her from this. Mm -hmm. Her owner is fabulous. She's just giving her the time and space she needs to do what she needs to do. Somebody from Georgia, I can't imagine. She just wants her happy. Mm -hmm. That's the owner's whole thing. She wants her happy. So the, the owner was the owner when she was up on tour? No, her? she bred her. And she, she bred racehorses, and mm -hmm. she sold them as yearlings. And then she tracked their careers. Okay. And so okay. when Next it was one. time for them to retire... Are you changing? When it's time for them to retire from racing, she made sure they made it into a good home. Whether that meant she bought them and then re-found them a home, or, um, you know, she just tracked where they were going so that they went to the right place. Mm -hmm. And she had always wanted to keep one of them, um, but they were all crazy. And she's not that kind of a horse person. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was her last baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a sweetheart. Has an awesome body. Yeah. Oh, fabulous, fabulous to ride. I bet. The owner, I don't know if she's ever actually going to ride her. The owner has all sorts of neck problems. Yes. Um, she has an Equitronic that she uses on herself all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and she has a, a personality that doesn't really match Allie's very well. She's a very high anxiety individual and she tends to get Allie a little amped up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she's actually um, been staying away for the, last, the next point for the last few months quite a bit mm -hmm. and um, so Allie down. has Easy. boomed Easy down job. so much more mm -hmm. You're all right. and then she tolerates her owner more when her owner's here mm -hmm. so. and her owner's trying to learn to mm -hmm. <laughs> chill out when she's here we have to be responsible for our own energy <laughs> we do yeah yeah <laughs> all right ready for the next spot Okay, ready to rotate. <laughs> Look at you standing all square and perfect. All right, next point. So you don't do the middle one again? No. Uh, yeah, I did one time on these uh, three mm -hmm. dozen vessels. And I started out 
probably 18, 20 years ago doing a minute. Okay. And I've never changed. Okay. I didn't, you know, it's just okay. uh, one thing, you're not just hitting these alpha waves, they're not just satisfying that acupoint, they're going clear through her body. Yeah. So you're getting a bunch of stuff done behind wherever you're working on it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, I'm sure maybe half a minute or whatever might do it. Yeah. But I just stayed for the minute because it's, the results are so consistent. Yeah. I had usually done 30 seconds unless it was a spot that they were reacting to. Right. And then I'd hold it for a minute, minute and a half, mm -hmm. two minutes until they stopped reacting and then I'd move on. Okay, you'll rotate. So you've done quite a bit with uh, the points with the the infratonic. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, you know, your old book had points in it. Yeah. I actually photocopied that and laminated them. Okay. <laughs> so I could hand it to my student and say, go do honey <laughs> or go do this horse and, and mm -hmm. do this protocol. And so a lot of my students knew how to do it. I had taught them how to do it because so, I don't have hours a day to do it. Yeah. So how long have you uh, been, uh, how long have you had our equipment? Since the Hunter Derby last year, so almost a year. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so you've done a lot in, in that time. Yeah. Well, I originally got it for myself, for my knee. Okay. Um, because I had dislocated my knee right that same weekend that you dropped off the samples. <laughs> well, perfect. <laughs> and anticipation. And, uh, and then I started playing with it with, uh, I had three horses at the time I was playing with it with. Two of them no longer live here. And... Um, yeah, I was seeing, I definitely saw that they enjoyed it. You know, I could see the horses mm -hmm. relaxing and enjoying it. And like I said, I did, I would do 30 seconds a spot and I did all three of them for at least three months. And um, it just got a little bit unwieldy because that's a lot of time every day. Yeah. <laughs> Five days a week. Um, and so I started hanging it primarily in her door. Um, the other two weren't so needy. She mm -hmm. was, and at that point, I felt like she needed it more mentally than even physically. Mm -hmm. So I thought the hanging in the door would have a longer, greater effect because she's having a longer period of time being exposed to it. Yeah. So the other guys got compromised. I'd pull it out of her door and do them periodically and then put it back in her door. <laughs> well, you know, the, the study the, the, uh, of the acupoint study where they right, treated 10 horses in, uh, with a, uh, the infratonic the and 10 horses bed. none. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that was three times a week they did the 40-minute 40, 40 treatments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they, it wasn't every day. It was three yeah, times a week, okay. and they got pretty good results with that. I, oh, I've wow. been doing uh, horses I work on consistently once a week with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if, if I, uh, I've done the stress points. It seems to just get everything relaxed back to where it was. Mm -hmm. And once a week works well. Mm -hmm. All right, next point. Yeah. It's a little like the head bobbing. <laughs> All right, next point. Last point. There is a point that uh, my veterinary acupuncture book discusses as as uh, affecting cribbing. But it's a Chinese point in in Chinese, and I've never found a vet who could tell me what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done with that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is sweep. And what I do is I hold this thing at a 45, and I uh, do this, which focuses energy down all the meridians kind of gets everything, uh, the chi, the Chinese chi flowing, I guess to a three. I do it uh, five times on each uh, quarter. And five times down the center meridian governing vessel, down and out the tail. And you got to get in the habit of having it on 45 degrees if that pushes everything ahead of it. And the 
lag meridian is just off of this right here. So I do five times down that, and it runs down to the hook. So that's just off to the, off the side of the... Right. The governing vessel is right down the center, and then the lag meridian actually has two, two lines going down right here, and then it comes together back here. I ordered a second one of those headsets, but it's still in the mail. I'd love to have you in the headset and <laughs> sort of recording the conversation. What's this one? This is the gallbladder meridian here. And uh, the stomach also, the stomach meridian also goes this way. Do the center again. So this is stretching out the bone. I did. The carpal bones in their knees get stuck together and that's how you hair sister. Yeah. Yeah. You can see when he pulls that it stretches all these muscles in her arm. Next week for me, a stretching appointment. <laughs> and I've already checked her back. Okay. Um, what do you want? Do you have a safety pin? I do. Everybody has a safety pin. Or is that a, a standard issue in Barnes? Yes. Okay. I go through a lot of them. It's not a standard issue around here, but I have them for uh, numbers for showing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to attach them to saddle pads uh -huh. and stuff. So what were you doing? I'm going to show you. Okay. Taking this and tickling it. Tickling it right there. Yeah, I know. Come on, huh? more. Oh, this is to crack the neck, get him to turn. There, you hear it? Good okay. Job. See, that is why. Good job, baby. That's it. That's and it. then she licks and chews, and that's yeah. the release of all the endorphins yeah. and everything mm -hmm. else, and the processing of what just happened is when they lick and chew. Yeah. And I didn't jab her. No, mm -hmm. no. You just. What did you do? It's like a tickle. Just lightly tickling and not like lightly a poking. Bite. Yeah. yeah. Their thin's a little, their but uh, a little that neck being out like that, that was a big one. Mm -hmm. oh. So that's going to affect her all, okay. the and way they travel completely. The head going down and moving like yeah. that. Mm. She's processing, okay, yeah. all of this feels different. Am I okay? Hey, okay, I'm okay. Yeah, he's helping you. And that, you know, those are the things you can do yourself. I never thought about doing it that way. I've done the carrot stretches right. to get them to come around. and. Yeah. See, she can do that now. She yeah. couldn't. Thank she you. couldn't bend her, bend her neck that way before. Yeah. And a lot of times, when that oh. side's uh, out like that, they look on the lug to the left. Yeah. I'm thinking right lead canner was where she couldn't quite bring her head around, but that would make sense because the left side has to lengthen. Right. Right. Yeah. Come close so we can hear you. Uh, experience like wow, how she's doing today yeah she feels amazing today mm -hmm. she's so much softer even behind supple agreeable able to do the job just amazing best she's felt in many 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 months if not ever and what what do you notice in specific locations front back or any? everything whole body yeah it's a whole, whole body it's improvement a whole body approach yeah, every, every body part is functioning better and more harmoniously mm. with each other. Mm -hmm. You feel good? It, and is she able to do more precise dressage movements? Yes. Yeah, okay. she's, she's more able to do things that have been a real struggle for her. So okay. then it's very relaxed it's easier. now even. Yeah. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's yeah. Yeah. happy with herself. Oh yeah, yeah. People walking in that door like that would normally at least tense her up, and she didn't tense up at all. 
yeah, I'm going to finish her today. Okay. Uh, yeah, I drove. Cool. I couldn't wait to get here to see her. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get here to see her. I told, I would tell them I should, I feel guilty about how much pleasure I get out of it. <laughs> well, she feels amazing. Wow. Uh, Lindsay, I think that, that point treatment I just gave that other horse is what this horse needs. Uh, Hawk and Stifle and... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he... Uh, yeah, he doesn't have a lot of uh, stress point issues. Okay. Uh, just he general had... body sorts. Oh, it is still there, bud. Just a little bit. He had, um, right through here. Mm-hmm. not... I mean, it was... If I touched him like this, he would just collapse. Right. Um, so that's gotten way better. Uh, well, what, what all those points do is make those, even though you're not right on that muscle, uh -huh. it makes everything okay. free up. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you, I won't have to work on that thing. These, all these other points that I'm hitting yeah. are relaxation points. Okay. Okay, there are several spots in the neck. First one is the uh, nuchal ligament, which is right at the top here. There's one on each side of the vein, and it's uh, attaches to the rear of the skull. There will be a sore spot on each side that the horse will not let you touch. This horse doesn't have any. Uh, there's a, another spot right here, Ooh, that one is and you can see that he's reactive to that. There's another spot here that's not so reactive. Uh, this spot here is uh, where the serratus muscle anchors to the shoulder blade. You can see a little bump there. The tricep muscle anchors to this. Uh, it's called the ulna, this top of the uh, leg bone. And there are several muscles that anchor to the scapula, which is like this. And they come up and they anchor along the bottom edge of the scapula. So, so, so what you're doing here is uh, feeling for sensitive points. Uh, yeah, the in... Golgi mm -hmm. nerve ending is at the anchor point of these muscles. And it is, sends a signal to the brain, to the to motor nerves, to either operate or shut down. And what that sore point is, is that's the Golgi muscle, or Golgi nerve ending, sending that signal that it's limiting the activity of that muscle. And the, that's what that sore point is doing, is sending a signal. And there are anchor points all along the hip, uh, along the sacrum, where these muscles come up from. They, they insert down here on the leg and down the hock, and they come up here and they anchor, or anchor along the spine, and that's where these stress points are. Being. This horse has none. the uh, tensor body, body lattice muscle that anchors here on the bottom of the tubercoxae goes down and anchors here on the stifle and this is one of the major muscles that are used to push off uh, and they're moving the, forward. So this horse is, is putting weight on one side, it is not square, so are you finding things that would indicate... Oh, no, he's the... relaxing. Oh, this is this is relaxed. He's relaxed to what my putting his hands on him. Okay. What he's doing. He just got okay. in got into the palpation. So there's not a whole lot wrong back here. Okay, now this side, uh, this muscle here is the 
minor glute muscle and it has a stress point that's about two inches behind the point of the hip and so this muscle is sending a signal that it's overworked how can you tell he's reactive to oh, that point reactive. okay and that's you know that's the only reactive spot I can find on this side uh, when I do this treatment I I hit points that mm -hmm. have not told me they're reactive, but I know they're tight. Uh, you can feel a large knot here, and that muscle anchors up here on the scapula. See how the horse moves, Richard? When, he, when he's finding sensitive spots, the horse tells him yeah. Yeah. pretty much what's going on. But this horse doesn't have a lot of really sore stress points. Uh, so I'm not going to have to spend a lot of time on each one. Uh, three to five minutes probably will do most of them. So, so you did a session of, on this horse yesterday. Yes. And so what was the, uh, is the relaxation of the horse today largely because yes. of what you did yesterday? Exactly. Okay. Uh, those muscles that were knotted up, all those points I did yesterday contributed to re him relaxing and freeing up uh, the muscles that he uses to move his body. So why, why then uh, did you want to wait a day after doing that treatment before doing this treatment? Uh, it doesn't really... It, well, it, that point tree would take 24 to 48 hours to really be completely effective. So by giving this horse a day for his body to adjust, the only the, the most active stress points are still here. Mm -hmm. uh, this point back here in his right hip uh, is really the only thing on his back end that's showing much. But I'll, when I do him, I'm going to do several several points. Uh, all those, even though they're not showing uh, a hot spot, they all have to be tight because they all have to work at the same level. This muscle that is tight works at. Mm -hmm. And you'll be applying the infratonic then to these points that you have found. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I spent years and years sitting on a stool holding these stupid things <laughs> and trying to figure it out how to do it without uh, killing myself. Yeah, these things this are so, so good. So the Velcro just isn't uh, strong enough? Uh, no, well, it is. I just don't want one of these $900 machines to fall up and hit the floor. Yeah. Uh, and get stepped on. And get stepped on. <laughs> okay, now that, that uh, glutus, uh, glutus minor, I have to look in the book and see, but it's, here's the point of the hip. And it's about two inches behind the point of the hip right here. That's where that muscle that is reactive on the other side is. So I'm going to do both sides. And I'm going to leave these here about 20 minutes. The rest of them I can move here in just a couple of minutes. And you got to be really careful with these pins because horses never forget you poked them. Then I find the point of the hip, and then it's about two inches back behind the point of the hip. And so you're not necessarily 
treating the exact point where you found the sensitivity. Yes. You are? Yes. Okay, so it, it it's is always going to be in the same place. Okay. Uh, you know, you find the point of the hip, and then it's back behind and a little bit of above. Okay. Point of the hip. So, why did you choose the particular points you chose? Uh, this is where the bicep femur is anchors, and that muscle gets used every time they push off mm -hmm. going forward. And this is where the, uh, uh, the glute muscle anchors, and that's shown soreness, and the rider can feel the soreness there. And up here, I'm just going through the stress points that are used, the horses uses those muscles uh, to go forward. And that's, uh, even though they're not reactive, they have to be a little tight because there's tight muscles in other places. And the horse uses, uses all their muscles every time they move. So, so you're moving them now because you already treated the other side, place a little bit? Well, yeah, three to five minutes. Okay. Uh, on points that aren't reactive, we'll free that muscle up. That muscle's going to be tight, even though that stress point's not telling you it's tight. It's going to be tight. Mm -hmm. You like this side, do <laughs> So you're going to turn on all of the machines? They're on. They're on. This one's running. There. Okay. What was the specific point on the right hip? Just so I know. Okay. Uh, here's the split over. I'll uh, show you the book here in just a second, too. What you do is, here's the, here's the point of the hip. This source spot's going to be about two inches back behind right. right there. And, and did not, you feel a knot, or did he just... React. He reacted. Okay. And that's... It's already settling down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what I do is I now leave this, this one here. Quite a while. Yeah, because that's the that's, most irritated that's the spot. That's the muscle that's that's the most in need of use. <coughs> but these have been on here about three to five minutes, so I'm going to move them back. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that you're trying to hit all the muscles. Right. Well, see these. Muscles, it's the uh, biceps femoris, semi membranous, and semi tendinous mm -hmm. that make up the hamstring group, and that they're all anchor along the pelvis here on the uh, ischial tuberosity, which is this bone coming out of the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And they anchor up all along here and then go down and insert on the lower leg, and that's when they stride their leg forward. All these muscles work to bring the leg back and push their body forward. Yeah, but the, it needs to be able to release to go exactly. forward and that's where he hasn't been able to do it because exactly. they've been too tight. And then you're just hitting the shoulder uh, just behind and just on. Yeah, there are, well, uh, the, the, that Chapter 10 of the uh, massage book will identify all those points. Okay. Uh, but same thing, they were right. so tight he couldn't swing yeah. forward. If there's any tight muscles, they're, everything's tight. Yeah. If they're, you know, if they're tight in one spot, they're, they, kind of they're compensated everywhere else to make up, you know, so they can, you know, everything can go along with the, the tightest spot. like watching paint dry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stress point is 
down a little below the shoulder blade right here where the cinch goes. Hmm. And uh, you'll see a lot of horses react to have the cinch tight, tightened and that's because oh. of these stress points right here. Hmm. So if they're reacting from these stress points, it's actually tightness up here mm -hmm. that is manifesting over here. Right. Okay. Well, that's uh, this. It's the other end of the well, connector. Yeah, the scapula, the shoulder bottom of the shoulder blade is right here. Mm -hmm. And that's where they anchor, it's right here. This, this up here is another muscle that comes down and oh, takes okay. on the humor. So there will be uh, the, the supraspinatus and infraspinatus are up here and they go down and, and they anchor up here, go down and test the humerus. Mm -hmm. And mainly these muscles are control side Lateral. movement. Okay. So those would be important These ones to right here do the lateral work. No. So these, these ones. Two. Okay, okay. I want to make sure I yeah, heard that right. Yeah, the supraspinatus is here, infraspinatus is here. Okay. And uh, you can feel the uh, uh, or the uh, the I'm having a, uh, scapular, scapular spine. Yeah. yeah, spine is right here, and the and these two muscles are on either side of it. They anchor up here in the top of the shoulder blade. Okay. And go down and anchor on down here on the Okay. But, yeah, I can feel the shoulder blade right here. Yeah, the back edge of it. Yeah. And so I just want to follow my way down here so it's got all those. Yeah. And uh, I have to put, uh, th I'll have to put this machine on this spot mm -hmm. to get that muscle free up right there. But I like to go all the way down the edge of the scapula and make sure I've got all these muscles mm -hmm. anchored here and go down to the humerus. Now, David, from a time perspective, if you only had one device, yeah, you could theoretically do, say, the stress points along the shoulder on both sides, um, and then on one day, and then do the hind end on another day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would do the worst ones, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. just keep working your way through it. Right. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the, um, you've done a lot with this horse, what is the uh, value of the process that was done yesterday? Made a significant improvement in how he moved today. He was, had a softer, longer stride, softer over his back, um, much calmer, less spooky, uh, nicer in my hand. Um, I've never felt him go that nicely, as nicely as he did today. It didn't, there's still underlying things. I mean, this is a process. Um, sure. You know, he's having to relearn how to use his muscles. He's learning, he's having to trust that he's not going to be hurting. Um, and how to use his body differently. When I first sat on him, he, he didn't believe me he could do it. And mm -hmm. he, um, was really tight and defensive. So it took him a while to relax and be like, okay, I can do this, I can do this. And then he got to that point where he hit fatigue and suddenly he's like, this is getting really hard, I can't really do it anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was the time to back off, stop, go back to walk and call it a day. So and we'll it, it seems- at it again another day. It. <laughs> it up. Yeah, yeah. And at first I wasn't sure if he was just getting a little spooky for a moment or if he was actually fatigued and we kind of talked about it for a minute, and then I realized yeah, it was fatigue and it was exercise, time. You know, it was just it time. It take a little while to get those muscles. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what what I've seen is after exercise is a great time when the muscles are tense, lactic acid build up and different things to apply the infratonic mm -hmm. because uh, issues, inflammations are exposed at that point. Yeah, that's a good idea. I always think of doing it before to help warm them up, loosen them up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, in an ideal world, <laughs> be both. And an ideal world with one of these blankets that makes it so easy. It makes it easier. It would make it a lot easier. And multiple machines. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Well, I, I speak from personal experience, Lindsay. Yeah. yeah. It's really hard on your body to sit there and hold these machines. I know it is. I've already experienced that. On all these that. points <laughs> where you can be effective. Yeah. You sacrifice your body to keep that thing where it needs to be. Yeah. And that's why I gravitated to yeah. this system. It's part of why I handed it off on my students. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, you're you're not made to hold it your arm yeah. for a long, long period of time. Yeah. So, David, for therapies on their legs, do you have a system for those two? Uh, you get their upper body freed up. There is no leg. There is no leg. Uh, they don't hit the ground hard enough when they stride to damage, to inflame their leg. That, and that includes racehorses. So you're saying that if they're soft, if, if their muscles are softer, freed up, freed up then their their bones are supported in a different way, in a better well, way. They, yes, they are more fluid in their stride and they're not slamming those legs down are because they they can reach out. When they can't reach out, that leg hits the ground too soon and too hard. Hey. What I'm doing is I just started up here on the sacrum run attachment points go all the way down here and there's a couple on the back of the leg uh, he doesn't seem bothered by it but I'm going to put it anymore uh, there's a sacrotubical ligament right here it goes from this ischial tuberosity up to the very end of the sacrum so it's two sides of a triangle and when one of the sides gets spasmated it pulls the whole sacrum one way or the other uh, there's a chiropractic move for that for like three minutes so you do the front of the shoulder blade, the back of the shoulder blade, that whole section, mm -hmm. and then where around the point of the hip? You just go around the point no, of the hip? No, right now it's on the point of the hip, yeah. which is the longitudinal dorsi mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the glute muscle anchor yeah. up here. Then right two inches behind the hip. Okay. Then. Uh, at the bottom of the tubercoxae is uh, fascia yeah. latte muscle, tension fascia, fascia latte muscle anchors here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I do it behind the, the tubercoxae right here. Okay. Because usually there's some tight lines here, muscles coming up from, from below. below. Yeah, right. I feel it right there. And you do those same points on every horse that you work on? Yeah. Is they're just kind of general wellness. Yeah, yeah they. I mean, you know, this. Yeah, every horse is using the same muscle. Yeah. To make itself go forward. So it's mostly how much time you put. Uh, you put more time on the muscles that have more reactivity. Exactly. Yeah. But like I said, every muscle needs released. Just because they had to shorten themselves up to stay in units and with whatever's tight. How often do you do this? Uh, I usually have to do this one time. If I'm doing the point work on a horse on a regular basis, they don't get tied again. So I wanted to tell you about uh, my picture of Cowboy David and what he showed us yesterday. And so you can get um, a little orientation. Because my my perspective is with humans and not with horses. Cowboy Dave totally lives with horses, and he's seen them, and he's seen a remarkable thing that's really important to me. That is by treating a bunch of the points on a horse, which are trigger pain points through the throughout the body, all of the horse begins to work together. And um, I got a question this morning about what to do with um, somebody who's coming toward a uh, hip replacement or a knee replacement. And I had asked uh, Cowboy David about that, and he said with um, uh, hawks, which are a traditional inflammatory thing in horses, uh, the, the problem is not in the hawk. 
injecting with hyaluronic acid is typically what the vets do. Uh, but um, what he has observed is if you loosen up all of the pain points in the horse, the ligaments and tendons around the hop just relax. Energy is flowing. The horse is freed up. That's the expression he uses. Okay, so I, I was talking about uh, comparing uh, Cowboy David's treatment of the overall horse to relieve problems in the hock to a human concept of relaxing all the tensions we have in the body to relieve problems in the joints like the knees where we, we would otherwise approach a knee replacement from inflammation in the knee. So the concept that I get is people who have been holding their anxieties and conditions and tensions and things for a lifetime and creating local areas of poor circulation of inflammation or different things. And the concept of using something like the infratonic to a variety of points throughout the body to mobilize the whole body the way we've already seen these horses. One treatment from the horse yesterday mobilized the whole horse to feel free, front end, back end, the whole horse. And Cowboy Dave makes the claim that if we mobilize the whole horse, the inflammation in the hocks is no longer a problem. And is this true in humans? Can we basically apply to different points in the body, apply the infratonic, the way he applies the equitonic to the points on the horse, will this not only uh, make the whole person more alive and flexible and perhaps more able to experience life, but also relieve local conditions like hip inflammation, knee inflammation, that are, are considered degenerative conditions. So that's, that's really the, the question I have. And all, also, I wanted to talk about Cowboy Dave's objective today. Cowboy Dave's objective is to be provided some horses, and Frank Town Meadows has nicely agreed to provide us with, I believe, four horses that uh, Dave can demonstrate this approach on and get it photographed. Get a video, like we're making here, of this that shows how he locates the points, how he does very interesting procedures that I would say are like chiropractic adjustments that are very simple to do but cause a horse to react in a way that puts vertebrae back in place. And so a variety of techniques that he's going to show us. So our focus is going to be on the camera and uh, the audience, you people, are going to be asking questions to, because he's going to be holding a point for a minute. And, and the first time he's going to be describing how to find the point. But in later horses, he's going to be going through the process and it's an opportunity for you to ask questions because he's got a minute to answer a question between times that he moves to a different point and uh, draw out the extra information that he knows uh, because that's why he's here. He's here to share all that he knows for the last 30 years that, that some remarkable healers, uh, equine healers have taught him He's here to share it so that the world can have it. The things that nobody has ever known before or, or that aren't popularly known, he wants to make available. And so he's, he's put together a, a, a handout that you're going to have that shows the specific points. And our goal in questioning him today is to bring out the other things he knows. So that's the, the orientation that you have and you're helping this process by bringing him out and having him express himself and his focus is going to be on expressing himself to the camera even though he's 
going to be answering your questions and and communicating to individuals because that's the way he does it to communicate to a camera is a little difficult for him so that's that's it